Oops. All right, so our next speaker is uh, Dick Carrillo, who's uh, going to be talking about an uh, energy detection system that they've been developing in your radio. Um, and of course, we have another demo, so we'll see how when, well this, uh, this goes. Hello. Good afternoon. Uh, I hope that everybody is listening to me. Uh, my name is Dick Carrillo. I'm coming from Brazil. Uh, I work for a company called CPKD. It's a research telecommunication company from Brazil. Uh, we try to perform some research uh, in a high the number of uh, technologies related to telecommunication, we perform some research in optical telecommunication in wireless technology too. Uh, my group focuses on research in wireless technology. Uh, it's important to tell you before to start with my presentation is that uh, uh, is my first presentation in English. Uh, official presentation. I hope that you understand all of what I'm going to tell you today. Uh, but uh, if you have any question, please ask this question slowly because my listening is not the best of the one. Uh, we start. It's good to be in a conference like this uh, because our experience was very good to us using Genio Radio. Uh, we started uh, six months ago. Uh, we bought some uh, USRP devices, and we didn't. We have never worked with something like this, and we didn't know how to use it using GNU Radio. We we received the USRP uh, in December, and we tried to use it using MATLAB, and we realized that it was not a good business for us. Uh, immediately, we started to research GNU Radio. Uh, hope, uh, 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 but by our luck, uh, people from Etus Research helped us so much. They solved all of our, our questions. And we, at the finally of April, we got this uh, solution and that it was an important key to develop our cognitive radio system. That is the link address of my company, and that's my email. CPKD. CPKD is, uh, as, I, as I told you, a research company from Brazil. I take some pictures from there. That is the campus photo. Uh, we have uh, some, we have a place in which we can test us semi-ideal conditions, some systems, some antennas that w are developed at CPKD. We have a tower. In this tower, we have tested our cognitive radio system, too. And we test other systems that are developed at CPKD in Brazil. Uh, CPKD has a main project. It's called RASFA, R-I-S-F-A. Uh, in English, it's, it means Advanced Wireless Access Network Program. Uh, we have three main focuses. The first one is focusing in 4G systems. We are developing a physical and mech layer solution for 4G system uh, that, that is going to be applied to non-commercial frequencies. Uh, the idea of this part of the project is to solve some rural, uh, Europe, no, rural citizens, uh, and they are going to have access to 4G systems to non-commercial frequencies. Other, uh, sorry, other element of the RASFA project is the cognitive radio system. I will focus uh, in this topic during this presentation. And the other solution is to uh, help people who live uh, far, far away from main cities uh, like Sao Paulo 
for uh, like Sao Paulo is a main city from Brazil, but we have some cities with, for example, 100 uh, people, but they live in, Ama in the Amazon, uh, and they don't have access to internet. At this time, there are solutions that uses DVVS and RCS solutions, but they are not so much cheaper for Brazilian government. That is why that our company is trying to is trying to develop a solution. Uh, the main objective of this solution is to get a cheaper solution. As, as I told you, we have the three main uh, front ends of the project. Uh, I am going to talk about, you, uh, talk about the cognitive radio system project. Uh, we the two main objectives are the to have a cognitive radio laboratory, we have it at this time, and to implement a cognitive radio system. Uh, Genio Radio helped us to develop this solution. Cognitive radio project. Uh, it's a general diagram. Uh, as maybe you are asking why to use uh, cognitive radio. Uh, we are trying to use cognitive radio t uh, for many applications. Uh, you know, you have. I hope that you have listened about wide spaces. It was the, maybe the main application, but we have other applications too. It's uh, intercell interference coordination uh, that is going to be used in LTE Advance. Uh, we have the macro to femtocell coordination too, load balance too, and other applications. Uh, other when I talk other applications, for example, I told you uh, in Brazil there are some necessities. Petrobras is a main company in Brazil. They have a, a they have a own telemetric system, but unfortunately, uh, Brazilian government uh, don't give them the license to continue using their devices in an, into a an specific frequency. Right now, they become a secondary user, uh, and maybe that is a real problem that we are trying to solve at this time using our technology. Uh, I may, uh, I'm sorry to tell you, uh, I didn't tell you what does mean a primary and secondary user. In Cognity Radio, the primary user is the owner of the license, and the secondary user is the, going, is the guy that is going to take advantage of the frequency hall. Uh, okay, continue with the mesh cognitive system. Oh, I'm, I'm, I forgot to take my... Do you, do you have any... Okay, I will try to explain. Uh, the MCR is the mesh cognitive router. Uh, it it performs uh, some cognitive. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Uh, the MCR is the mesh cognitive router. Uh, it's good to say that we have implemented all of this system without cognitive uh, ac actions, uh, we have, a, at this time, we have a router, a dock router that performs the, the that help us to have a f system that works in sub one gigahertz. It means that we are using frequencies less than one gigahertz. And in this side of the network, we have a Wi-Fi system that works in the commercial frequency, 2.5 gigahertz. In this size, we have tested uh, every element that you know in, in your hand, iPad, cell phones, computers, etc. Inside here, we have inserted a, we, an artificial primary user to test our system. Uh, we complement this system with a core network. Uh, we have a cognitive controller in this side, and we have a management system here. Uh, as you, I tell you, we're developing a, a physical Mac and network cognitive layer. At this time, we, are in, in, we have finished the physical. Uh, the Mac is, is being developed. Uh, and to, to the idea is to perform these tasks. Uh, what you, what we have done at this time is we have uh, deployed this system. Uh, we have a, we are using a radio, a Wi-Fi radio, using a frequency less than one gigahertz. Uh, the distance was uh, 500 meters. Uh, we can use a, a highest distance, maybe four kilometers, for example. But the dimension of our campus didn't allow us to use other distance. Uh, 
Uh, in this side, we have the cognitive network. Our, net our energy detector was used here. And in this side, uh, we have the access network that is working in 2.5 gigahertz. Uh, the cognitive network elements, uh, here is the USRP. We have the secondary user here. We have two secondary users. We have a primary user uh, that is going to generate the primary user activity. It's interesting, but it was done using USRP too. Uh, it was modeled statistically with real information. We have performed a real survey from real use, real frequency use in our campus. and. Uh, it, we, we built a an statistical model and we use this uh, behavior to create an artificial primary user. Uh, we have these antennas, uh, one antenna for the Wi-Fi modulator here, uh, one antenna for our USRP that is going to work as a sensor or detector, and the other antennas uh, installed in the other devices. Uh, the generic sensing algorithm. Uh, what is the main? What was the main objective of this uh, project? It was uh, to to create an spectrum energy detection for very low signal uh, at the noise flower level, uh, and without need to know the signal characteristics in advance. Uh, it's good to say because uh, when we started with this project, uh, we research a lot uh, using Google and other libraries as IEEE Explorer, for example. And we didn't find uh, some real works that solve this problem, especially uh, getting good results with very low signals. We have got a lot of uh, curves, but the majority of them used just MATLAB and didn't help us to solve our problem. That is why that we was obligated to, ge to generate our own block that performs the energy detection. Uh, maybe you, you know a lot of this, this block. It was done by USRP, uh, all of the digital processing that we have. We receive here the I-key signal. Uh, in, inside here is our GNU radio block that was done using these tools, GNU radio, C++, and Python. Uh, the output of our block is sim very simple. Uh, we receive just one bit, and this bit will tell us if there is or there isn't a signal. Here is uh, a preview, a pre-processing data sequence to obtain segment grids. These are the segment grids uh, in frequency domain. Uh, it's good to tell you that it can be it can be performed in time domain too, but it's going to be developed in another stage of the project. Uh, we have the IK signals. We apply an FFT block from GNU Radio. Uh, we have a, we calculate the energy of every group. Uh, we can define the segments that can be that can compose compose these groups. And after that, we obtain uh, these uh, energy values of group zero, of group one, of group uh, n, n uh, divided m. m less one, it means that it's good to tell you that M is the number of, if the number of uh, subcarriers that are going to use it in FFT block. Uh, the main stages of the algorithm, uh, we have after we have performed this measurement, uh, with the stage one is we are going to calculate a uh, Z reference and uh, an other scale factor that is going to be defined by the statistical model. Uh, at stage two, we're going, we're going to calculate other scale factor and other dynamic threshold value that will depend on this ZRF. Uh, with these two stages, we are going to obtain a dynamic threshold that is the best thing of this uh, energy detector. And at the final, we perform a refining decision block uh, that was used uh, because we did we can't solve uh, a carrier problem the carrier that appears at the middle of the of the source block of U U USRP. At final, we are going to get a final detection decision. 
the stage one, I, I will be faster on this side, uh, we or organize the upward organization of every energy measurement. We have a sum of uh, one by one of these elements until uh, obtain this relationship. When we obtain this relationship, we are going to we are going to save this value that is the index in which this relationship is followed. Uh, but before we calculate uh, this uh, scale value too, is in this case is named as tau. This tau uh, is calculated using this block. Uh, this block was obtained after. Uh, Considering that energy measurement have a G squared distribution, uh, it, the reference is here. Maybe if somebody has any question or doubt about it, uh, after this uh, after this relationship, we can obtain the first uh, threshold reference value. It's called Z ref. This ref is going to be used in the in the next stage. In the sec at the second stage. Uh, we we perform a statistical validation here. Uh, we use a, in this case, uh, considering these uh, conditions, uh, for example, uh, as inputs, uh, in this case is the farm's alarm probability. Uh, we are going to obtain uh, other scale value, call it as gamma. Uh, we have used in this case a cumulative feature distribution inverse. Uh, maybe if you have some details, uh, I'm giving you here the reference, and maybe if you have some details, I can give you it after the presentation too. Uh, the interesting thing is here that this, we, after the end of these first two stages, we obtained this uh, threshold value. Uh, this threshold value is a dynamic threshold. Uh, that is why that we can detect uh, a, a signal with low SNR. Uh, after that, we define a number of segments that is going to be detected. In this case, for example, we have uh, uh, more than 10 segments. Uh, and this blue line is going to be defined by, by th this threshold. And depending on the band width of the signal that you are, you are trying to detect, uh, where you're going to vary this k value. In this case, you have 12. If you have uh, more than 12 uh, segments, you are going to detect the signal. If it's not followed, it means that you are not going to detect the signal. For example, this is a uh, other uh, point in the algorithm that can be improved to. Maybe it can be a dynamic value too. Uh, the third stage is what I told you. Uh, uh, to avoid wrong measurements related to center card inserted by USRP, uh, we inserted a complement measurement to avoid this problem. Uh, we, we didn't solve this problem. Uh, we tried to use uh, .tune request. That is one of the functions that are used. But uh, in that case, uh, when we change the bandwidth or any other parameter, uh, these energy values maybe appears some here, or maybe it appears part of this energy appears here, another one here. And that is why we solve this problem with a simple solution. Uh, we insert other, we insert a proportion value. This proportion value is uh, formed by the K and the M variable, we know the number of segments of our uh, of our FFT block, and we know the key value that is the number of segments of what that we are trying to detect. And this relationship will this relationship this relation help us to to solve this problem. For example, in this case, if I have a a, a key value of of 12, no, of, for example, of 3, for example, or 2. In this case, e if this signal is generated by the central carrier of USRP, I can have, I can get here a farm detection, for example. But with this uh, third stage, we solve this problem. Well, I'm going to finish. Uh, we have the energy detector algorithm here in GNU radio company. It, I use this, uh, the, this diagram just to show you what we have deployed. We use it just Python script to 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 get this uh, diagram block. Uh, here you have all of the blocks that are 
done by Genio Radio. And we have here the blog that was deployed by us. We, you have here some parameters, the number of segments, the farm's alarm probability, the farm's uh, discarded probability too, and the number of groups that you're going to have. It's the same here. Uh, you have the block that was done by us. Uh, you have the properties of energy detector block here. Uh, we have here the experimental validation. Uh, I'm showing you this maybe because all of you are familiarized with uh, with Genio Radio Companion. Uh, we have tested using uh, real equipment too, uh, signal generator uh, and a spectral analyzer too. Uh, we have here the primary user generator. Uh, we have an off DM signal. Uh, in this side, we vary the occupied tones. Uh, the band Y2, uh, in the other side we have the energy detector system, and you have here the detector. Here are some results. Uh, we didn't obtain uh, as, as publications, uh, analytical publications, uh, ne uh, good results in, SN uh, in negative SNRs. Our best uh, Result was obtained with four dBs with SNR, and from that point, when we decrease the SNR, we decrease uh, the performance of our system. But in spite of that, uh, for example, here in 3.7, we we have a, a good uh, detection probability, so it's it's more than 0 0.9 value. Uh, here is a uh, the signal that we detected. This is the uh, approximately more than 3 dB. H here is the OFDM signal. Uh, well, it's here. We have an optimal detection is done if the signal has highest values than 4 dB. As I told you, uh, the good point of this thing is that this uh, Genio radio block help us to deploy a, a cognitive radio system uh, this is the campus uh, using the campus from CPKD. Uh, here we have a router, cognitive router. Here we have other cognitive router too. Uh, the detector was installed here. I'm sorry, I forgot to 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 put here where was used where was where was installed the primary user artificial generator. It was here in this building. Uh, the yellow Line means that we are using a frequency less than one gigahertz using uh, Wi-Fi technology, and uh, the green one is is the network using dot two dot four gigahertz. It's the commercial frequency. Uh, we have tested uh, an applications using internet. We insert a gateway internet here. Uh, in this side, we have some clients uh, using iPad and uh, notebooks too, and we play some videos in YouTube and any other full buffers applications too, and they work so su successfully. Uh, here we, you have a photo of our mm, cognitive router, and you have some photos of our, this is the antenna that we, that we have used in this case. Uh, ah, okay. I hope uh, it's a demo. It's it's a simple demo because uh, I didn't prepare uh, prepare a a very good visual demo because uh, I I thought that everybody tried to present just uh, PowerPoints here, but I have seen that people like you love to see some visual results. That's why that I talk to my colleagues in Sao Paulo uh, to turn off my computer, turn off. That they that they should connect these uh, two USRPs that we have there. Uh, one of them, uh, I, I we wrote on a script to generate the of the um, signal uh, with a band Y of 0 0.75 megahertz, and a USRP two that is going to be is going to have the energy detector block uh, inside it. Uh, I will. I will perform just, a, I will try to run just the, the script that I have done right now. 
the first one is the the first one is the test TV TV two with it means that we're going to use a SNR of four dBs. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not in the right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it should be it should be near one, for example. the The value is uh, the value is near one. It means that uh, the detection is good performance. Uh, it in this case we have used the uh, I don't remember uh, four dB of SNR, and in the other case. We have used a different value of SNR. Oh, stop, please. Sorry, it says SSH is not faster. OK. And we have here a l very low SNR. And the detection value is, as you see, has l low values. Uh, in this case, our system is going to tell us that there isn't any signal. And like that, we like these examples. You can vary the SNR value. Uh, that the important thing is that we we apply this simple solution to real conditions, and it works very good for us. Uh, so I guess that it's everything. Thank to you. Are there any questions? All right, I have a question. So I've been working in kind of radio for a while, um, and uh, you know, so I've been following what the FCC has been been doing, and I've I've worked in Europe for a bit, and we've been following what they're doing over there. What are the Brazilian regulators thinking about right now as far as software radio and, and cognitive radio? Yeah, uh, Brazilian regulators maybe, uh, bon, as you, maybe you know, uh, for example, wide spaces in the world is not the first solution is not going to be cognitive networks the first solution is going to be to use a database information uh, maybe this solution was applied is going to be applied here in US is going to be applied in Europe too and our I'm guessing because uh, uh, Brazilian regulators they don't have exactly why they know but in general they follow what US and Europe follows Maybe that's going to be a, that is why that we are trying to focus in other solutions, not just wide spaces. Any question? Thanks again. Thank you. Oh, sorry, there, there's one more. Oh. Hi. Uh, I have a question. How do you manage the, the spread spectrum uh, signals uh, with the, the noise of the USRP? The, the device has a, a, a high noise. And how do you manage the, the algorithm to, to detect those, those signals? You can just use the mic up there, too, if you want. Ah, OK. See, let me. Maybe that's a. I I will not try to <coughs> focus in this point, but the, the as the main focus, as I told you, this algorithm uh, is based in to have a noise reference, and the noise reference uh, will be measured by these two blocks. The first one, that if the something that I can explain you before, this block uh, you have a. Uh, False, uh, false discard probability, and it's related to the noise value, and this false alarm probability too. They are two inputs to our blocks, and they will define us if what is the noise level of the signal that you're going to receive. 
Uh, here has a, a high equation to solve it. It's a statistical equation. As you see here, we we have a condition just if there is no if there is just noise. Uh, uh, that is the main uh, side of this algorithm that help us to to get uh, good detection with low SNR. As you can see here, you have if uh, here false alarm probability. False, it should be the false discard probability too. They are the main parameters of our block. Thank you. All right, great, thanks. Thank you.